Had a great question come through in the comments asking specific to cycling, how do we understand whether we're more of a fast twitch or a slow twitch or essentially whether we're a better sprinter or endurance type, type cyclist? And really, it comes down to doing a basic field test uh, and a sprint test. So I'm going to take you through how you can understand that today, how you break down the data and then get a bit of an insight into am I better at the endurance or maybe better at the sprinting? But then also based on that information, what are some ways that we can train uh, overall to be able to improve our weaknesses? If we're a really good endurance athlete, can we improve a little bit of that sprint and what are the methods we need to do and vice versa? So we're gonna break down nice and simple today, the easiest way for you to understand as a cyclist, your genetic makeup in terms of muscle fiber type. Hey guys, Nick here. Welcome back to the channel, talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. Thanks to everyone who's been supporting the channel so far by hitting that big red subscribe button down below. If you haven't, please consider subscribing. Plenty of great content coming out soon. And particularly, it'll keep you notified of when we go live and some of the streams we've been putting up lately, answering your questions uh, live, talking about the things that you wanna talk about, having them answered on the spot, you can jump in, ask a question, get the response you need uh, and go from there. have been really, really good. So doing more of those and the only way to stay notified is to be subscribed to the channel, but then also have a look at all my other social media as well. Instagram, I'll link it down below. Uh, go check that out because we'll be posting when those live streams are going up and when videos are gonna be dropping on the channel. Today's video, as I said in the intro, is a bit of an understanding for any cyclists out there in particular how do we understand are we a better sprinter or are we a better endurance athlete? It's the ultimate question that we all we all sort of want to know is what are we better suited to? Am I better suited to sprinting and track? Am I better suited to road racing, crit racing, that type of thing? And there's a really simple test that we can do to understand what our rough, and I'm going to say rough because we're never going to get a specific split in terms of fast twitch fibers versus slow twitch and for those of you who don't know, fast twitch fibers in our muscles are the ones that are really explosive rapid, allow us to produce high amounts of power sprinting. Our slow twitch fibers are our endurance fibers. They're the ones that are going all day. They fatigue at a slower rate so we can produce lesser amounts of power but over a long period of time. Everyone has a very different genetic makeup when it, when it comes to this, this, I guess, split between fast and slow. Really, there's a spectrum of your really elite sprinters have really high amount of fast switch fibers. They're your track, track cyclists. They're your really explosive guys, the big guys who can produce heaps and heaps of power for a really short period of time. All the way through, to much smaller guys who are endurance specialists. They can go all day, they can ride for hours on end, they can do the climbs really well. We have a we have a continuum like that. So everyone's gonna be somewhere on that continuum. Now the average person, the average cyclist is probably gonna sit somewhere in the middle. They've got a bit of both, but they kind of lean a little bit more to the other. Majority of the time they lean a little bit more endurance. Some of the time they lean a little bit more to sprint, but they've got a bit of a mix of both. The really elite athletes in their sport, so our elite track cyclists, they sit right at the top end of fast switch and they're fast switch animals. All the way at the bottom end is our top end Tour de France cyclists winning the climbs, things like that. They're, they're super slow twitch and they're struggling to produce that big power. So what I what I want to talk through today is a quick test that you can do as a cyclist and, and you can then understand where am I better suited or what might my genetic makeup actually look like. And if anything, it's gonna give you a baseline to work out where your strengths and weakness are, weaknesses are anyway. Now, when we do this test, we're not gonna get it, like I said before, we're not gonna get a specific split of your percentage um, fast twitch, percent slow twitch. That the only way we can establish that is if you went and got a muscle biopsy done. Which, if you don't know what that is, essentially they they take a uh, muscle sample, usually from your quad, and take it from your calf, from the middle of the muscle belly. They put it under local anaesthetic. They they pull out a sample. Um, it needs to be administered under like a doctor or surgeon um, doing it. So the average person can't just get it done. It's, that's why it's difficult to find. Then they analyze that muscle sample to actually look through a microscope and have a look at what are your fast twitch versus slow twitch percentage and, and map it out from there. This is a much simpler way of getting similar information by knowing what those types of fibers do. Like I said, fast twitch fibers are really explosive and rapid. So they're gonna give us our really fast rapid contractions. Our slow twitch fibers are gonna be our more endurance type ones. So they're gonna give much more sustained, slower contractions. What the test is then is a five to six second maximal flat out sprint on your bike. Ideally, you start from a pretty close to a stationary stop. So almost like a track stand, if you like. Um, starting pretty stationary, you can do it on a velodrome. A, a, a straight piece of road is, is probably more ideal with a slight little downhill to get you going in the first place. You wanna chuck the gearing on your bike as heavy as you can go, give yourself as much resistance as possible without necessarily going all the way up to the top because if you just can't get the pedals turning, you're probably gonna come off. So give yourself a little bit there. But then what you wanna do is a five to six second maximal sprint effort as hard and as fast as you can go. And why am I why am I concerned with that? Is because what we have happen is in the initial stage, we get a really big, um, we, we get a really big spike in what our power output is gonna be. And we see two, two essentially more, I, I guess, shifted profiles depending on if you're more slow twitch and endurance or you're more fast twitch and sprint. 
The first one from a sprinting perspective is we typically see really, really, really high cadence in this five to six second effort. So we might see 140, 150 RPM if you're really rapid and explosive. Maybe somewhere above 130 uh, RPM is a really good starting point. So having the ability to measure cadence on your bike is useful. I would prefer to do this um, if, you're, if your trainer can handle it, sure. Um, when we've tried to do this on things like a Tax Neo in the past, and nothing against Tax Neos, I love them. I think they're great. They're really, really good. We've tried to do sprint testing like this before and, it, and it's blown it up when we do have athletes go from a cadence of say 90 to 150 very, very quickly. So just be careful of that because the, the tax jammed up and we can go over the front of the top of it. So doing it out in the road is probably a little bit better, but try and do it on a, a quiet road, obviously, because you are going to be going pretty fast and give yourself plenty of room to slow down. But if you're getting cadences up into the 130, 140, 150 sort of range, really, really pedaling fast, that to me says we've got a really high... Uh, composition of fast twitch fibers because we're able to produce those explosive rapid contractions all that rate of force development here you're also going to be producing high amount of power because if you've got a, a really heavy gear or hard resistance multiplied by a high cadence you you're going to be you're going to be producing a large amount of power now on the flip side of things if you've got a much lower cadence if you produce your peak power and, and that, this is where the kicker is and I, what we're saying sort of i guess only in the first couple of seconds of this six second effort so we want to just see where the highest power rating is and then where the highest cadence is yeah, at basically the same point as, or, or what your cadence is at the same point as that peak power. If your if your cadence is much lower, say at 100, 120, something like that, what we end up with is you're probably more on the slow twitch fiber side of things. You can't produce that rapid, just super fast contraction. So we're more going to be aligned with the aerobic, uh, slower twitch fibers that are going to produce contractions more sustained, a lot slower over a long period of time. Now, what does this tell us in terms of practical takeaways? Well, if you sit on either side, you can train the opposite way. Like I said, everyone's got a bit of a split between fast and slow twitch fibers in the average person. So they're gonna be able to have a bit of both. But it means that if you've got really, really high cadence uh, and you're really explosive, maybe when you're doing some of your um, some of your work on the bike to be able to improve your rate of, uh, rate of force development, you don't have to do as much of it. So you don't have to do really high cadence work as often because that's the, the natural ability that you're good at. Maybe start to focus on the weaker side of things and produce more force into the pedals and do some lower cadence work if you're doing bike specific training. On the flip side, it just changes to the opposite. If you're better at the long, uh, the, the force production side of things, maybe start working on some higher cadence to work on a weakness. But what it really then tells us is because we now know, are you able to produce these really explosive rapid contractions or are you gonna be producing more sustained contractions because these different fiber types are gonna give us two different results in the test, you now know which events are gonna be more suited to you. If you can produce those really rapid explosive contractions, things like track cycling are perfect. Things like sprinting at the end of a road race are gonna more be suited to you. If you're producing some of those lower RPMs, maybe something like um, going and time trialing and, and holding a consistent cadence is gonna be more suited to you. The, the longer endurance type stuff is gonna be more suited to you. These are where we can start to see, all right, where, where are our priorities in terms of best matching what our genetics is gonna provide us. That is the best way to then maximize what your performance is. Whether whether then you like training for those events or not, like if you're if you find out you you're really explosive but you you hate going fast and you actually like doing the endurance stuff, that's perfectly fine. That like go with your training goals. Like by no means is this a this a, a limiter in terms of do this test and that's the only type of racing you can now go and do. But it gives you an insight in what your I guess advantage is from a genetic and a and a muscle fiber perspective to then go, all right, I'm gonna make strategic decisions on I'm gonna race these types of events because that's where my body is better suited. Typically though, what our body is better suited to is gonna be what you're enjoying anyway because it's what you're naturally drawn to. So hopefully that, I guess, makes a little bit of sense in terms of doing a really short, simple test, going through, analyzing the data, have a look at your peak power, what was your cadence at your peak power, match those two up. If you've got a really high cadence, more fast switch. If you've got a lower cadence, probably slower twitch easy, simple way to understand a rough genetic makeup of what your muscle fibers are doing. So hopefully you got a little bit out of this video. If you do have any questions, please leave them down below. Have you done any sprint testing like this before? Be keen to hear your thoughts and let us know in the comments as well. If you've done any sprint testing, what is your peak power down below? Interested to hear. I think mine uh, very roughly in a 30 second Wingate test, I think I can get to just on a thousand. I'm not very big. Um, I'm not much of a cyclist either. So I take that as a pretty good win, but let me know what you guys can get to. If you've seen 1200, 1500, 1800, can you crack 2000? Let me know in the comments below. Always happy to hear how you guys are going too. Other than that, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already to keep up to date with all the latest videos. That is it for today and we'll see you in the next one.